He has to go after President Trump, but he has to do it in a way that says that defining what America is, what democracy is, what the presidency sorry, should be. That's what he's got to do. We can't go super personal. That's inappropriate for the State of the Union. He has to present a vision of what his presidency will be. And then, and, and then during the campaign, reinforce what the vision is of what the Trump presidency will be. And his opportunity tonight is to do that unfiltered. Uh, and it's the last opportunity he'll have before November to do that without any filter. If you were writing, they came to Wendy Schiller and they said, Professor, can you give us, this is how stupid yep. this is, Paul. <laughs> Professor Schiller, could you try to give us two sentences for the president's speech? What would those sentences be? What do you want America to be? What do you want this country to stand for? And, and are you willing to work together to make it happen? That's what he's got to do. He's got to channel FDR. He's got to channel, um, you know, obviously JFK. That's hard to do. John F. Kennedy. But he's got to channel even Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. The spirit has to be, do you want what we view to be the ugliness right now? Or do you want to turn the page and, you know, rebuild what we have as a country? And that's something he's got to set as a lofty goal and basically say, I'm the guy to do it. Uh, and the other guy's not the guy to do it. Wendy, Tom and I and all the other folks that have the Bloomberg terminal in front of them, we see the economic data. And the economic data in this country is pretty darn good. But that message is not resonating with the public. What do you think the president and the administration need to do to kind of change the rhetoric to say, you know what, this economy is pretty darn good. And in fact, this administration's been a big part of why it is pretty good. I think that I think the Biden administration made a pretty significant flaw in their uh, selling of their legislative program, the Inflation Reduction Act infrastructure. They didn't really, really tie what they were doing to how it's going to improve people's lives. And this is what Democrats do. They go big. They're successful. <laughs> they get a lot of big things passed. And then they completely fail to sell them properly. The Republicans cut taxes, raise deficits, and they're the magic party on the economy. This has been true for 40 years. I mean, I don't know if there's a magic, you know, magic answer to this. But I think right now, right. telling people the economy is better than they think it is, is not going to work. Showing people how the government has helped them in the face of a bad economy a couple of years ago may work. You just got a window there, folks, <laughs> into Professor Schiller in the classroom where she loses it and actually tells you what she thinks. Wendy, do liberals sit in their hands tonight? You know, I think I think everybody, whether it's young people that we're dealing with in college campuses or disillusioned people in their 50s or 60s with the Democratic Party, have to understand that this is moving from a referendum, a po you know, a popularity contest to an actual choice about what you want to see over the next four years. And so liberals who are really panicking have to understand they have to think about what the realities of a Trump presidency will be for their policy that they want to see passed and what Biden could bring. And so I think that's the problem. And the more discord that is out there in the Democratic Party, the stronger Donald Trump becomes. They've done a great job of containing uh, him. On. Oh, come on. He, he looks pretty good now, right? He's, okay. People forgot what he was like before, go. and they're, they're like, okay, he'll be better than Biden. Wendy, go back to Blaine from Maine in Grover Cleveland Alexander in the 1890s. The Democratic Party was a mess. And it's always been a mess all through my youth. And granted, there was a peaceful years of the Clinton Obama thing and all that. But isn't the Democratic Party supposed to be one big scream fest until, you know, 12 hours before the election? Well, the problem for the Democratic Party is that the Republicans can do that. And then they all come together in Kumbaya and they <clears throat> vote for their person. Uh, and Democrats get mad and stay home. And so that is the big risk for the Biden camp this year. This speech isn't about saving the campaign in one night. This speech is reminding the base of the Democratic Party about the alternatives that will face them in November. That's what this speech is. And if Biden can be energetic, avoid too many gaps, then maybe he can start to bring people back into the fold. Wendy, will there be presidential debates this cycle? <clears throat> Um, Paul, uh, so far, um, I um, have think, thinking to myself, yes, because so far, Trump will look more energetic and more vital in a debate vis-a-vis -vis Biden than he would have looked against Nikki Haley or Ron yeah. DeSantis. So I think the choice set is different for Trump, right. um, but that's always a risk for the camp, right? Does yeah. he you know, show up as d good Trump or bad Trump? And they can't control right. that on the debate stage. Uh, Wendy, have you ever been in a smoke-filled room? 
<laughs> I mean, have you like in your study of your iconic textbook and all, have you ever been like at a convention and they're all smoking cigars in a room and Professor Schiller's there or student Schiller was there? Have you ever actually done the depths of the process? I have not done that. The closest I came was working in Democratic, alternative Democratic Party politics in Chicago in the 1980s, which, you know, came close to that kind of environment, but not quite. Okay. <laughs> so real quickly, Wendy, should Tom and I pay attention to the conventions this summer? Uh, yes, because I think that, um, you know, remember Donald Trump's speech in 2016? Right. Um, he'll do a very similar speech this year, <clears throat> similar right. issues, right? Especially crime and the border. Right. And that's an Achilles heel for Biden, right? right. It, four years later, eight years later, right. things don't seem to be better. That's going to be what the speech right. is. For the Democrats, I still think there's a possibility of change in oh, the yeah. ticket. We don't know for sure. But right. I'm not sure how smoothly that convention goes. Wendy, I uh, spent time with the Secretary of Commerce this week at the Council on Foreign Relations. How's Governor Raimondo of Rhode, Rhode Island doing uh, in the Biden administration? Well, she's keeping her profile relatively policy oriented, which is what she is and what she did as governor of Rhode Island. You know, everybody's starting to look ahead to 28. That's, you know, on the Republican side and the Democratic side. Um, Pete Buttigieg moved to Michigan, for example. Gretchen Whitmer's right. getting a lot of press. Um, I think she's just going to decide, do my job, do my job well, um, see what happens with the election and then take it from there. But I don't think she's ruling right. anything out.